here's the approach I want you to pay attention to. So basically, when we look at the form uh, 8812, we're speaking about credits for qualifying children and uh, other dependents. So this is how the form looks like. So you actually put your first name, last name. You have to put your social security number. And then let's quickly go to a part one. So part one here is basically about the child tax credit and credit for other dependents. So you you have to put the uh, amount on line 11 of your form 1040. In our case here it was uh, $75,000. And uh, so everything on 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D does not apply to us. So we put uh, actually zero there. So when you add lines one and 2D, you have a 75,000 same amount. And uh, here for the number of qualifying children under age 17, we put two. Again, here, this is a hypothetical scenario though. So uh, so line four, we put two. And when you multiply uh, everything, you follow the instructions, on line uh, five, you have uh, 4,000. So you multiply two by uh, 2,000, you have 4,000. And uh, line six, you have uh, two also. And line seven, when you follow the math here, you have a 1,000. And so when you add line five and uh, seven, you have a 5,000. In other words, when you add 1,000 to 4,000, you have 5,000. And when you follow the instructions here, in terms of uh, line nine, you have a uh, four, $400,000. And when we, uh, when you actually, so line 10 and 11 do not apply to us, so we actually skip that. And so when we talk about uh, line 12, especially when you follow the instructions for line, uh, for line 12, you have $5,000. So line 14, I mean, line 13 first, basically when we talk about uh, the uh, credit limit worksheet A, we have 2,000. So when we added a smaller of uh, 12 or 13, we have 2,000. So bottom line here is that, is that uh, basically everything depends on your situation. I just want to show you like uh, what uh, that's, what uh, the calculation looks like. And if you have to, to, to uh, claim the child tax credit and the credit for other dependents, and everything has actually also uh, revolves around your filing status, whether you are filing as a as a as a single, as a joint filer, or you are filing as a head of household. Their situation are really changing. So if you have any questions about uh, your filing status, let us know in the comment section, and somebody will get back to you. Somebody from our team will get back to you. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. I want to show you how you actually transfer that data on your form 1040 as you can see on the screen here so we're we're talking about form 1040 and the thing here is that the on your form 1040 the data must must be in sync now i'm showing you this is uh it's only when you are filing manually if you're filing using tax software the software in the background will actually do the calculations for you and will also uh attach all the appropriate forms automatically you don't have to do anything okay and next i want to show you also another another form here so we're we're talking about uh again form 2555 and this is actually applies uh, to let's say if you have uh like taxpayers claiming the foreign earned income exclusion or the taxpayers claiming the housing exclusion foreign income uh, foreign earned income exclusion or both or taxpayers claiming the housing deduction so information on this form 2555 actually has a direct correlation or a direct implication for form 8812 that's why we're showing you this how it looks like just in case you have to file manually and you're looking for you know what is what i want to show you another form that you will uh, you also need for uh form 88 to 12 we're we're speaking about 4563 and this is about uh, the exclusion of income from uh, i mean income for bona fide residents of american samoa and it's one of those things if, if it, this is applicable to your situation then you really uh, have to consider this form again we're showing you this form on the screen so you have a clear idea what this form looks like in case you in case it is applicable to you and i want to show you another one here this is uh, the credit limit worksheet a if you remember earlier i was talking to you about the i was talking to you about uh, 2000 a certain two a certain amount 2000 and i was referencing credit limit worksheet a so this is how this credit limit worksheet a looks like okay bottom line here is that you have to uh, when you file form 8812 you may have to file ancillary forms with uh, that with that form 8812 and uh, so credit limit worksheet a is one of those where you have to actually work out the numbers yourself and uh, again everything i'm telling you here if you are filing form if you're filing any of those forms electronically the software the, the tax software will do the math for you will do the preparation for you you don't have to do anything now this is only if you're doing things manually then you need to understand the the uh, the mechanics 
of the calculation before filing the uh, filing form 8812 with the IRS. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about Form 8812. Next, I want to show you on the screen here, we have a part 2A. So this is an additional child, child tax credits for all filers. And here we are, if we if we follow the instructions here, line 16A, we put 3,000. And uh, basically, uh, number of qualifying children under age 17, we put two. So when you multiply a two by $1,600, you have 3,200. And uh, you put that on uh, 16B. And uh, for line 17, we are ent entering the, the smaller of uh, 16A or 16B. In our case, we have 3,000. So the smaller of 3,200 or 3,000, that's, uh, that's 3,000. And uh, so the earned income, 72,500. And if you actually, you know, we put yes, so we are subtracting. Here I am on uh, ni line 19, so I am subtracting 2,500 from uh, 72,500. So the amount here is uh, 70,000. And uh, when you follow the math here for uh, line 20, if you multiply, uh, if you multiply line 19, 70,000 times 15%, uh, we have 10,500. And uh, now I'm, I'm showing you here. So this is for part two. You can see that this is pretty. This is pretty straightforward. It's one of those things where you have to follow the instructions of the IRS. That's it. I mean, you know, the form itself is pretty great in terms of uh, the math. It does the math for you. It tells you what to do. And uh, so part two B does not apply to our situation. But if part two B does apply to your situation, please let us know in the comment section, and we'll certainly explain everything to you based on your situation. Okay. But for the for for sake of time, we are going to skip this this uh, this section so part 2b actually is uh, about certain fathers who have three or more qualifying children and bona fide residents of puerto rico and uh so it's one of those things we have to see what really works for you and part c we have uh the additional child tax credit and so this is basically your, your additional ta child tax credit so we are, in our case when we did the math we have three thousand so for all intents and purposes our additional child tax credit our acd ACTC for this year amounted to three thousand. And how did I get that? Well, simply because uh, you are you you are seeing uh, like this is the math that really resulted from this uh, form. But don't forget to uh, transcribe or uh, transfer rather, not transcribe, transfer this amount three thousand to your form 1040, 1040 SR or 1040NR line twenty eight. Let me give you the overview when we talk about uh, form 8812 here so we so everything is clear about uh, what we have to do now what you have to actually uh, when we talk about credit for qualifying children and other dependents we you 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 can report the payments in the at the federal section the deductions the credits and the child tax credit form 80 from uh, 8812 one thing i want to say here is that it's one of those things where you have to see you have to see your situation and you have to really pay attention to your qualifying children in other words your children that actually uh, can be uh, quali can be qualified okay now what are the what is a qualifying child let's have a clear idea about that so a qualifying child for purposes of the child tax credit is a child who meets all, all of the following we're going to put this on the screen so we have a clear idea what we really mean so the individual is the taxpayer's son daughter stepchild eligible foster child brother sister stepbrother stepsister half brother half sister or a descendant of any of them for example a grandchild niece or nephew again we're going to put this uh this on the screen and the individual does not provide more than half more than one half of his or her or of uh, her own support during uh, the year so the year actually uh, goes from january through december so this is important to really understand that and uh the third condition is the individual lives with the taxpayer for more than half for more than one half of the tax year and again, we are speaking about January through December. The individual is properly claimed as a taxpayer's uh, dependent. The individual does not file a joint return with the individual's spouse for this tax year, or files actually uh, for or files it only to claim a refund of withheld income tax or estimated tax paid. So this is uh, this is important to remember. And the individual was a U.S. citizen. Okay. U.S. national or U.S. Re resident alien. This is important. So those six 
conditions must be actually met. Is there any uh, income limit? Well, the new maximum credit is available to taxpayers with uh, a modified adjusted gross income. Like uh, again, the AGI is found on the on line eleven of the of uh, this year tax form. So we're speaking about seventy five to eighty five thousand for I mean or less for singles, one twenty grand or less for heads of household. And 150, 165 or less for married couples filing a joint rate turn and qualify widows and widowers. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about uh, Form 8812. Now, the thing is that in some, let me give you a winner here. So we have a clear idea what kind of situation you have to follow. It's really important to understand that the child tax credit is actually a great for all kinds of situations. And you have to make sure that those situations apply, apply to your, to, to your, to your, to your life or to your filing status. And it's one of those things where you will actually will, will receive payments from the IRS if you do qualify. And again, according to the IRS qualifying taxpayers that are eligible to receive the advanced child tax credit payments for their families will receive a personalized letter providing uh, actually an estimate of how much the, the payment will be. And again, the rules are changing all the time. And uh, this year, you have to really just uh, stay tuned. One thing I want to say here is that when we talk about the qualifying child, in some cases, you have something called other dependents. And so dependents who do not qualify for the child tax credit are reported on Form 8812, Line 14H for U.S. Re residents or Line 15G for non-U.S. resident. And this amount is actually pulled to line 19 of the 1040 form. And uh, it's one of those things where you have to see exactly what really applies to your situation. And one thing I want to say here is that, you know, people talk all the time about, well, additional child tax credit. What is it? Well, additional child tax credit, basically, the way you want to think about it, it is an extension of the child tax credit. And it was actually designed to assist families who might not fully benefit from the regular child tax credit due to their low tax liability. And if the credit amount uh, exceeds the tax liability, the IRS may refund the difference up to a certain limit. So it's important to note that the child tax credit and let's say a credit for other dependents are both non-refundable credits, while the additional child tax credit is refundable. And uh, so uh, for eligible families, it can help alleviate some of the financial burdens associated with uh, raising children. And uh, schedule, schedule 8812 is actually the IRS tax form designed to help eligible taxpayers claim the additional child tax credit. It's one of those things where you have to understand that there is uh, an element of uh, principal abode. And principal abode actually means that the main home where a child lived for more than uh, half of the tax year. This is actually a determining factor in qualifying for the additional child tax credit because it helps establish the child's residency and the extent of financial support provided by the taxpayer. Let me give you a few pro tips here. So it's one of important. It's really important to understand that when we talk about the child tax credit, and we know that the rules are changing all the time, you have to make sure that you have uh, you know about the exceptions to a qualifying child tax credit. Okay. So if your dependent did not live with you for more than half of the tax year, you may still qualify for the child tax credit if one of the following circumstances apply. So the child was born and passed away in the same tax year and lived in your home while they were alive. The, uh, the dependent was away at school or in a detention facility, or you were away on business, receiving medical attention or on active military duty. And uh, non-custodial parents may claim the credit so long as the custodial parents does not claim the credit or an exemption for the same child, okay? And uh, so it's one of those things where if you are in a situation where let's say you are separated or you are divorced and uh, there is a, a scenario of custodial parents versus non-custodial parents, there has to be an agreement between the, between the parents as to who will uh, ultimately qual claim the, the child, okay? And uh, it's one of those things where you have to understand that you are you are going to uh, maintain proper documentation if you are going to file the, the forms. Now, can you file the Schedule 8812 if you are divorced? Well, as I was just saying here, in instances of divorce or separation, only one taxpayer can claim the child credit on Schedule 8812. Usually, the parent with primary custody is awarded the credit. However, IRS Publication 596 states that, that a non-custodial parent can claim a child 
as dependent if the following are through are, are true we're going to put this on the screen again so the parents are divorced or legally separated lived apart at all times for the past six months whether or not they were married and the child received over half of their support from the parents and or lived with one of uh, one or both parents for over half the year so it, it this is really uh, the, the conditions of longevity must be met for the uh, for form 8812 to actually apply here Let me give you the extras here before we close to this conversation. So when we talk about Form 8812, we are speaking about the form that is constantly flexed, that's uh, actually injecting some flexibility when it comes to uh, filing taxes for the parents. And it's one of those things where you are basically making sure that you you have the you meet the qualifying children requirements, and that you are constantly uh, making sure that uh, you know the situation between non-custodial versus custodial parents is actually clarified. So before you can claim the additional child tax credit on Form 8812, you need to evaluate whether your dependents meet all qualifying child requirements of the original child tax credit. This original uh, requirements must be met, okay? The child can be your son, daughter, blood or step sibling, stepchild, foster child, or the descendants of any of the above, such as niece or grandchild. And it's one of those things where, because the laws are changing, all are changing every single year. Make sure that you qualify for this specific specific uh, year. One thing I want to say here is that uh, it's really important to understand that your uh, when we talk about the Form 8812, this is actually how things ship up at the federal level. But you want to make sure that uh, you you inquire with you you inquire you inquire about how things ship up at the state level because your state might, might actually have. Uh, additional ch child tax credit rules also, and uh, you might qualify or you may not qualify. In other words, there could be an instance where you qualify federally, but you do not qualify state-wise and vice versa. So, you know, you want to, uh, if you have any question on that, again, it will be too long here to uh, to go over uh, the circumstances for all 50 states. So for your specific situation, let us know in the comment section, let us know where you are at, your city and state, and ask your question. And one of our team members will get back to you and provide a more granular answer and helping you understand how things uh, ship up in your area. And But long story short, it's important to understand that, uh, you know, if you claim the child tax credit, credit for other dependents or the additional child tax credit in error, you might be barred from claiming any of those credits for two years if it is determined that your error was due to reckless or intentional disregard to the CTC. ODC or ACTC rule. So if the IRS determines the error to be due to fraud, you will not be able to claim any of those credits for 10 years. You also might uh, have to pay penalties for erroneous claims. So this is kind of really important to really pay attention to that. You, you want to really uh, do things honestly and keep all the records so that if the IRS were, were to ask you any questions, at least you have the, you have, uh, the, the, the capacity to provide a to actually substantiate all of your claims. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. Let's quickly uh, recap to this conversation. So I was talking to you about the Form 8812. So uh, I gave you the approach, the overview, the winner, the pro tips, the extras, and now the recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.